Australia is a land like no other, with vast landscapes of tropical rainforests, arid deserts and white beaches. The continent has served as the home of up to 700,000 native species, with the majority of them being found nowhere else in the world. At one point, Australia was a land of ancient stories and vibrant cultures, where the indigenous peoples thrived and lived in harmony with the land and its creatures. However, this era of peace would not last. With the arrival of the European settlers came a wave of change that would forever alter the landscape of Australia. As the settlers expanded their reach, vast areas of wilderness were cleared for agriculture and industry. The delicate balance that had sustained Australia's ecosystem for millennia was disrupted, pushing countless species to the brink of extinction. One of the species they drove to extinction was the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. Described to have a dog-like appearance with distinct sandy yellow-brown fur and dark stripes across its back, the thylacine was the world's largest marsupial carnivore. Its slender physique, equipped with powerful jaws and sharp eyes, marked it as a formidable predator in its ecosystem. The thylacine coexisted with the indigenous Australians for thousands of years before their eradication. By the early 1800s, colonists had established vast sheep and cattle farms across the Australian landscape. During this process, the settlers had a reoccurring issue of their livestock being killed. Despite evidence suggesting that feral dogs were primarily responsible for the deaths, they began to blame and hunt thylacines for their misfortunes. By 1830, bounty systems for the thylacine had been established, with farm owners pooling money to pay for thylacine skins. In 1888, the Tasmanian government also introduced a bounty of one pound per full-grown thylacine and 10 shillings per juvenile destroyed. The program extended until 1909 and resulted in the awarding of more than 2,180 bounties. Approximately 3,500 thylacines are believed to have been hunted down by humans from 1830 to the 1920s. The decline in thylacine populations was further exasperated by the introduction of competitive species like wild dogs, the spread of foreign diseases such as mange, and extensive habitat destruction. All of these factors eventually culminated in 1930, when the last known wild thylacine was shot and killed. While the species was given protective status in 1936, it was already too late as just 59 days later, the last captive thylacine named Benjamin died in the Hobart Zoo when it was locked out of its sleeping shelter during an extremely cold Tasmanian night. Despite the tragic demise of the thylacine, whispers of its survival linger in the vast expanse of the Australian wilderness. Reports of sightings have persisted over the years, sparking speculation and intrigue among scientists and enthusiasts alike. From the dense forests of Tasmania to the remote reaches of the Australian outback, thousands of accounts have emerged, hinting at the continued existence of this enigmatic creature. Thylacine has generated more controversy and obsession than any other extinct animal with reportedly hundreds of sightings since its extinction date. Being equally obsessed and convinced it's still out there, I spent the last eight years covering over a thousand ground miles in search of it. Despite the lack of definitive evidence, the fascination with the thylacine persists, spurring ongoing efforts to uncover its fate and potentially catch a glimpse of a Tasmanian tiger in the wild once again.